And then down here, the lambdoid suture, that you can see right here that's split right here, is doing the same thing on the skull. Okay, so R.A. Schroeder de Lubick's diagram was kind of um, rough, and so probably many people skipped over that, but I knew it was correct because um, of what the uh, scarab beetle is often seen doing, and that is we see that there are wings on either side of the beetle. This is common when we take a look at the images of the scarab beetle. And the reason that this is important is because when we start getting into comparative uh, research regarding the symbolism, you'll see that in the various cultures such as the wing disc, the, uh, the winged helmet of Hermes, um, the wing disc that you see on the Assyrian Tree of Life, all of these things are placed at the very top, right? And this is referring to man, and in this particular instance, as we're looking at right here, the Egyptians are showing us that it is actually the skull that we're referring to. Now, there are some other things when we start getting into geometry beyond the symbolism that kind of help us uh, put this together because uh, what a lot of people skip over is they skip over the perfection of the geometry that the Egyptians were showing us in this, some of these reliefs. Um, this one in particular caught my eye because of you can see that it was carved out in very exact proportions. The way that it's done, it's, it's done meticulously. It's not rough at all. And because of that, and the way that we see the geometry on here, it really is going to help us put some stuff together. So let's come over here to this. Now right here I've got, uh, I took this beetle and I just took the color and I inversed it. The reason I did that is so that when we take a look at the lines, the lines will show up real easy on the beetle and we'll be able to see what we're looking at. So here's our Metatron's cube. And our Metatron's cube helps us decode a lot of stuff. And what you'll find about this geometry, <clears throat> it is fractal in the sense that you can, uh, you can take something like this Metatron's cube, for example, and I can take that and I can scale it uh, one half the size of itself. And by doing that, it allows me to see more detail with inside it, for example. Uh, if I want to take a look at the middle part and I scale it to one half the size, you can see that all the lines intersect still. Uh, but now it gives us kind of a better idea as far as uh, we have more circles that we can see that are smaller inside there. So if we wanted to take a look at a fractal image that was provided to us um, and we wanted to take a look at the detail of it, then we could add the detail inside Metatron's cube. So I could add one there, I can add one in the lower area down here, and I can add one in the upper area right in here. So the Metatron's cube, and the reason I've done that there, okay, is I will show you an example. For, uh, let's take a look at the Tree of Life. So if I want to get a better image of the Tree of Life, you know the top three sephirot, they're shaped where you have uh, Bina here, you have Kether here, and you have Hulkma over here. Now in the diagram we just saw a minute ago, right here in this circle is where the beetle was. Okay, so here is Hulkma, here is Kether, here's Bina, and right here in the center, this circle right here is where the beetle was. So if we come take a look at this over here, the same geometry is, is shown. You have this hex hexagonal geometry that you see right here. And that is the same hexagonal geometry that you see right here in the Tree of Life. So if we want to take a look at something smaller in a larger Tree of Life, we can do that by scaling it, which is what we're going to do. So we want to take a look at the Tree of Life up here. And you can see our Tree of Life is smaller than the large image right here, but you can see how everything fits into these areas just perfectly. Well, by scaling these images, let's turn our Tree of Life Sephiroth off now. Now you can see where all the Sephiroth belong on this particular image. Starting up here, you have Kether, you have Bina, you have Hulkma, and then you have the center area, but look at all this detail that we have now. Okay, now this is what's going to be really important. We want to take a look at this beetle. Okay, 
So now we're going to put this beetle on and we're going to take just a look at his geometry, not his placement right now. Uh, we're just going to look at his geometry. Okay, so with all this detail that I have right here, I'm going to put a beetle right in the middle of this image. Okay, so here we go. Here's our beetle. Now, when we take a look at this, I want you to take a look at what the, the Egyptians have done here. They've given us a lot of detail to show us something. So what I've done here initially is I took the size of the sun right here and I made it the size of one of these circles. Right Now if you come down and you start taking a look at how this connects into the beetle's body, you can see that they have uh, you can see that they have brought that over into the body, the, the top part of the circle of the head. That's just actually part of the body. And then here's the key part that I found. It's really, really important. Let's zoom in on this real quick. The coronal suture of the skull, if you notice, follows this X right here. So when this is in place and we have this in place, then we know our geometry is correct on where this beetle is supposed to be located. Okay, So that's the key point because these X's that you see right here, they're only in certain places and we'll see why that's important. If we come down here though and we take a look at the bottom part of this thing, they followed the lines of this right here. You can see where they've uh, followed the, the area bringing this things all the way back up. Now if we take a look at uh, even stronger geometry, even more detail, we can see that the sides of his body follow the detail here. So let's just take off and all this geometry that I've used, for example, this flower of life pattern, on the, on the uh, Metatron's cube, there's one, two, three, four, five circles from here to here, okay? So if we want to get a flower of life pattern on here, and we use a flower of life pattern that works with this, we have one, two, three, four, five circles this way. And that's the reason it fits in here so perfectly. Now if we wanted to get more detail, we take the one, two, three, four, five circles and we scale to one half the size and that gives us this. So all of this stuff is done geometrically correct. It's not just thrown in there. Okay, It's scaled geometrically correct. So now we can start to see a really some of the geometry that they put inside here, especially when we add the Metatron's cube layers. We can really get an idea of what they have done in high detail. Okay, But this X that we see across the coronal suture is really important here. And where we've got this right here, uh, as far as the sun goes and everything, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, now let's take a look at the placement. Because you remember what it looked like on the Tree of Life. Uh, we have our detail here. Uh, because here's our tree of life that we're interested in and that's the reason why these smaller Metatron cubes were added. Uh, and then we want to take a look at the frame of that, the frame of the tree of life. So when we take a look at this diagram over here, if you notice the beetle is right here on this cross. This is the same as the skull or the head that we just seen. Remember this diagram right here. So here's our tree of life and if you remember our large beetle um, I've now moved him up here, okay? And I want you to notice that when we take a look at the ring around this right here, that this X that you see across his back that you see, and I'm going to zoom in for you real quick. You see how the line, that X I was showing you goes across that coronal suture here? Okay. Um, the reason this is important, because now if we were dealing with that size circle, then this right here and this right here would be the two side circles, which means the beetle is placed right in the middle. Now let's go, let's make this thing fractally smaller and we're going to turn on, so we can see it with our tree of life, a smaller beetle and we're going to turn off the larger beetle 
and now we're going to get a, we're getting a better idea of what they were trying to show us in the relief. If we turn down the Sephiroth here, as we can see the size of his son versus what we see on the Sephiroth. What this gives us then, if we zoom in, see that X that's going across the coronal suture, okay? And his son is right here. And we have these three circles. We have Kether, we have Hokma, and we have Bina. And by knowing that this, knowing that the X is right here with this beetle, and by scaling this to the certain size, if you'll notice, this cross is right on top of the beetle, this tree of life, and that's exactly what you see right here. And this also refers to the human skull as well. What I've got here is I've got a an MRI image. And so if this is crossing on top of the skull, which is actually uh, crossing on top of the forehead here, but this understanding the geometry of the ancient Egyptians and what they were putting in this beetle, uh, relating it to the symbolism of the skull, like Arishwar de Lubick showed us, and where it's placed on the tree of life gives us a lot of information. So now let's imagine that this is the skull of a human being, okay? And we're going to turn off the scarab beetle and we're going to turn on an MRI image that I've captured out there of the human body. And here's the human body. And this cross is right across his skull. And I want you to notice that the geometry that we see inside this, where his head is placed, uh, this being the crown, Hokma, Bina, and where these things are placed in here, this is the solar plexus moving up to the heart. This whole middle area represents the solar plexus, if you remember from the tetragrammaton. Uh, and then you can see the center area. We'll just take off the tree, for example. And how his body fits in there. Fits into the geometry just perfectly. And so this uh, is the type of information that you can get uh, by with precision geometry. Um, and when we take a look at the various reliefs across culture, we can see that the ancient Egyptians, uh, the Assyrians, uh, Hermes Trismegistus, anywhere you see the winged beetle or the winged disc or some variation of that, what it's referring to, to, to esoterically is the tree of life, and it's referring to the anatomy, which refers to the skull, which refers to the crown. And this is what they were showing when they showed the beetle. So anyways, that's going to conclude what the geometry I wanted to show you today. Um, I just wanted to show you how all this stuff kind of fits in there together. And if you take a look at that right there, you can kind of see that looks a lot like what we see when we see Hermes Trismegistus. He's got a winged helmet on. He's got wings on both sides of his head. It's the same kind of uh, sim uh, symbology that we see. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that first uh, thing on geometry. And we're going to get into a lot more. Try to become familiar with the uh, Metatron's Cube. Uh, I use a freeware tool called GIMP. You can find it out there. It's the best freeware graphics tool I think there is available. It's a lot like Photoshop. Uh, but you can use it, and if you start building templates and adding the geometry on top of each other and just keep adding layers and layers to it, what this allows you to do is it allows you to compare one relief to another, the geometry of one thing to another, and all kinds of things. You can start uh, relating the geometry to, the, to and, the, and all of its, uh, its associations and its correspondences to other things, all by having just different layers. You saw how I kind of turned things on and turned them off. Uh, this is very helpful when you're trying to learn this kind of stuff uh, and very helpful when you're trying to learn the human body uh, as well. So anyways, you guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.